A bunch of years ago, I made a squirrel proof. A bunch of years ago, I made a squirrel proof bird feeder. It was very popular, and it has over 3.5 million views today. Yes. And if you haven't seen that video yet, it's right here. It was made from inch and a half copper pipe, and as you know, the price of copper has gone through the roof. And since making that video, I finally found a cheap alternative to copper. And at the time, I did a small experiment to see what was the smallest size opening a squirrel could not get through. Three inch, no problem. Two and three quarter inch. Two and a half. Two and a quarter, a little snug. Troubles at two inch. And at one and three quarter, no way. So a good size is just over an inch and three quarter. I had some inch and a half copper pipe at the time from doing an old plumbing job. This worked great and allowed the birds to get through the holes, but not the squirrels. This worked really well, and after six years of having this feeder up, the squirrels still haven't been able to get inside of it. But I wanted to find a pipe that was bigger, that was cheaper, and I wanted to make it out of pipe on all four sides. It wasn't until I was in my local Home Depot store one day when I found the perfect pipe for this project. I found these fence posts that are seven and a half feet long and they have an inner diameter of just under an inch and seven eighths, which is the perfect diameter, plus they're cheap. I also grabbed a couple of quarter inch, inch and a half stainless steel bolts and a couple of stainless steel nuts. I decided to cut each piece of pipe five eighths of an inch long. So on this one I used the square as a nice straight edge, and with these ones I used the yardstick, just like I did with these ones down here. And after 24 hours you can see that the silicone is holding these together really well. And as you go, make sure everything is squeezed together and make sure everything is nice and square and wipe off the excess silicone. And you can see it's getting stronger as we go. And as they say, strength in numbers. And once we take all four of these sides and connect them together, it'll be even stronger. So after you have these assembled, you'll notice from using the pipe cutter that it has left a burr inside of each of the pipes. But this deburring tool is perfect for removing that. The cutting tips are removable and it comes with 10 additional cutting tips. And if you want one of these, I'll have it linked in the description under the video. They do a nice job of smoothing out the edge. Next I bought some 1 16th by 3 quarter inch angled aluminum. I should have told you this earlier, but if you use wax paper, this will prevent it from sticking to the bench. Wipe off the excess that's squeezed out. And like before, another 24 hours. I use my squeeze clamp to hold the first piece up. And now flip it over and we're going to mark it and we're going to drill two quarter inch holes so that we can mount it. Yeah. 
I used three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood for the base and I mounted it to a regular piece of plywood which is also mounted to a piece of 4x4 four four post and a hole to mount it on a metal post. I wanted to give it an outdoorsy look so I used my torch to darken the surface and with a self igniter on it it makes it really easy to use. And like I said earlier any tools I use in this video will be linked in the description under the video. And this is where we'll use those two stainless steel bolts. And these two bolts make it very easy to open up and refill with seed. I really like this water-based varathane. Cleanups are so easy. And plus it's made for outdoor use. When you apply it, it has this light blue color and as it dries, it dries crystal clear. I also use Baltic birch for the top and this is half inch. I'm going to put a simple angled roof on it. So I'll attach this piece of wood on the end first. You can see the length and the width of mine just by counting the rings. But the beauty of it is you can make it any size that you like. The roof is also going to be half inch. I then measured the inside and I took a quarter of an inch off the length and the width. I then went to my local glass shop and they cut me the pieces. A bit of masking tape to line things up and then silicone to hold it all together. And with the dimensions of the tray being smaller, it fits over easily. It took about a week until the first squirrel discovered it. He couldn't figure it out and he went away empty handed. On his second visit, it didn't take him long to figure out how to put his paw in there and get a few seeds. So I decided the best plan of action would be to reduce the size of the seed tray. And when you make one of these glass trays using silicone, they're easy to take apart using one of these razor blade scrapers. They're cheap, the blades are replaceable, and it's perfect for this job. You just unsnap it here, replace the blade, and snap it back together. So once I reduced the size of the tray all the way around by two and a half inches, I decided that the outside piece wasn't necessary anymore. Plus this would now allow the birds to enter from the lower holes. It only took a day and he was back to check it out. 
The two and a half inch distance between the pipes and the tray ended up being the perfect size. When birds are in there rummaging through the seeds, some seeds do fly out, and at times the squirrels are able to get a few seeds. To me, this is a good trade-off, and they don't go away totally empty-handed. And with this design, they're not allowed to empty the whole feeder in a day. And I've found since I've put this up that I only have to fill it about once a week. At this point, I decided to add some simple bird perches. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notifications, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.